Zach Bowie Towers. <laughs>、Nick Adams. Hi. Hi. Hey. This, this is actually very special because my podcast is actually on hiatus, but. You're such a, like, a sex forward <gasps> human being. And people have been like, asking for more episodes. So I thought this would be like, a treat to, to toss to the Tower Bottom community. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for bringing it out of hiatus. Yeah. Out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Early retirement.、Um, okay.、Yeah. Do you remember the first thing that made you horny or aware of sex?、Ooh. Um, Well, I. I guess. Like, I was really into Barbie dolls、mm. as a young kid. And, and like, the, the Kevin, Ken doll. The Ken nub. The, like, the bump. The、yeah. plastic bump. I felt something. <laughs> I don't know what I felt, but it was something. Yeah.、Um, and you said you made them shmush each yeah, other. Yeah, I used to, like, make the Barbies, like, bang. Do horrible, horrible things. And I didn't really know what they were doing, but I felt like that was. Something. There was something there. There did, was some type of electricity to it that did, I was like, I want this. Did you connect with Barbie or Ken? Um, like, where did I see myself in this yeah, equation? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. If you right, had a tag right in the, the photo. middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess both. There was like something about like Barbie that I was like, oh, she's so beautiful.、Yes. And Ken is just throwing her around. He's so beefy, muscular. Like, I wonder if they've given Ken body hair ever, like、mm. drawn, not like it'd be creepy if it was like actually like fuzzy, like, <laughs> like Tom Selleck doll. Well, because Ken, Ken has like plastic hair on his head, doesn't he? Or does he have because Barbie has like actual, it's not like she's oh, giving, yeah,、right? he doesn't have、Ken、like real doesn't hair. hair, he has like drawn like, on, drawn on, colored like plastic. Wow, justice for Ken, yeah, but but. What if he had like a, like a little bush and just like a little <gasps> chest hair? If they gave Ken a happy trail, <gasps> game over. I'd be done. Then I see myself as a hap- as、uh, happy trail. Walking down that trail. Yeah, pot of gold. I don't know. Do you remember the first time you discovered your body? Like your first. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have this memory of the house I grew up in, and my mom had this like big stuffed, it looked like corduroy fabric. Blue overstuffed couch. Okay. And she, there was a bathroom like right next to, this was like the den in our house, and there was a bathroom right next to it. And I remember my mom like having some conversation with my brother about biting his nails. And she's like, You can't bite your nails. And they were like in the bathroom, like cutting his nails or something. And I remember just being like, Coast is clear. And I pulled down my pants like around my knees and then was just like humping the armrest. <laughs> And they were like right there. They were probably like less than 10 feet away. Like they were just like on the other side of the wall with like the door to the bathroom open. And I was like, oh, I can, I got time. I can do this. And, Damn. My, mom, and my mom like came around the corner and I was caught and I was like, but, and like pointed at my butt to try to like, we h o w o l d i s h I mean, probably like maybe f- less than five. Like I, I、oh. think I was around the age that I was like starting to feel those things. And you also mentioned earlier that you've known you were gay. Yeah. Since around then? Yeah. Like, I remember my dad taking me to the,、oh, not to get off topic, but anyway, so no, that, no, no, no. that moment, get off topic. that、this、moment, Lucy, Lucy. that moment I remember, and she, and she's like, and I said I was exploring. So I had that in my vocabulary to be like, I'm exploring. And she's like, oh, you're exploring your body. But like,、oh. but like, new. Yeah. She didn't shut you down. She、no. didn't like freak you out. No. She, I mean, I think she was like shocked at first. And then, but she'd also like, my mom would like catch me in my bedroom, like rubbing on the carpet. Like、your butt that, or your no, crotch? No, my crotch. Like at that age. She, I was an early bloomer. So, like. Was it soft carpet? It For was some like, reason, it, it was feels... like green. It was like a bright green, like short shag. Like the. <laughs> yeah.、Um, But wait, like. Yeah, just rubbing it on the floor. Is doing stuff with people nearby a thing in your life? It hasn't been.、Okay. I mean, I've maybe explored that a little bit. Okay. So I've gotten older. But. It's not like something that I need like、sure. to get off. Like,、ah. Yeah. But、um, what I was going to say is my dad took me to the Y as a kid. The pool changing room or the locker the room? Lo- the showers, like the group shower room. And I remember just being like small, short enough because you're so little. And there's just like full grown male、Anatomy. genitalia all around. And you're just like. The, sh- the shapes inside bodies and hair. And, yeah. Dude, and they were like. 
I just have this this memory of this, just seeing like a lot of like beefy jock type men in there while while I was like with my dad and being like, <gasps> and then I in that moment I knew something was up. Something <laughs> is up. Yeah, and feeling like scare, or feeling like sort of like shame around it. I don't know, even though I didn't even know it was what it was or like how to put language around it but i was like this is something what's gonna say what was the vibe about gay in your household like i don't even think we talked about it or even like, as you were like showing signs of um like when did you come out not till i was in college okay yeah i mean i knew that my parents knew okay and like they were great when i told them but it was like i i knew they didn't want to initiate that conversation it's a weird one it's weird. And I, I had like this scandal in my town, like when I was in, I was like a freshman in high school or something where I was like caught hooking up with a guy in the woods, like who was much, much older than me, like full blown pedophile vibes. So the police were involved. Like my parents knew I had to like lie my way out of that. Oh my, wait, do you feel comfortable talking about this situation? Yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, wait, what? Okay. Okay. What, what, was it like a, an online thing? No. So I did a lot of theater growing up, obviously. I grew up at this, I, I guess I won't say the <laughs> name of the establishment, <laughs> but like I grew up doing community theater mm-hmm. and I was always in a show there. And there, the, the guy that was like their leading man that they were like obsessed with and in love with. And I was also like a child star there. So, you know, like I, I was respected. And you people, could relate to I each had, other too. Yeah. Like we're um, both stars. Anyway, I was in a show with this guy and it was like a long time coming and he like kind of initiated what I thought was like a relationship and we started to like... Like making out or texting or like what? Yeah, like I think this is even before cell phones. So oh, it was we, like calling me on the phone and we were, we had like my parents you're like knew elementary I was school? friends with him. No, I, I was, or I don't middle? think I had my own cell phone. So I think I like talked on the phone with him. Okay. Yeah, it was like freshman year of high school that okay. this happened and okay. I just had started um so I was like 14 I mean I uh I used to have on the phone. no no, no. Okay. we were talking on the phone but I I would get rides home like it was a it was like a slow courting process and then like we were my parents knew we hung out with him because he was like he had a girlfriend he was like straight everybody loved him and it was like a oh my god he, he had an idea that I was gay and so then he was like asking me questions and then finally it like became like well, but, if you ever want to do something. Yeah, it just developed. And then I was like getting rides home and like giving him head on the way home. And like I had like clear braces. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I, look, I looked 12, but I was 14. It was like that kind of. And I thought wow. he was like, in lo- I thought we were in love. I thought we were like, yeah. And it was like the first time I'd ever really like experienced that. And I. Is I he the first person you like had a sexual thing with? I mean, I had like kind of made out with a guy before that. Okay. Um like one of my friends mm-hmm. and then we never talked about it again. It was like, <sighs> you stayed but, friends though. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not friends with him now, but like at the time, um, but he also was like, had a lot of shame around it and his family was really religious. So anyway, that, that happened. And then I was like, Oh my God. And I was, I remember him asking me questions about that experience and like us talking about it. You and your friend making out. No. Yeah. And, uh, so he kind of like, that was like his way in. And he's like, well, do you think like you might be gay? I mean, there was, so it, it all unfolded into like sort of like a long standing thing. Like he would give me rides home. I would like, wow. Give him. Well, sat, yeah. And then like we, so anyway, we pulled into a park that was near my dad's house. Um, cause he lived near my dad and then we were kind of going for it. And the police were like, knock, knock, knock with flashlights on the window. And I was like, Oh God, this is in the car. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my um, God. And terrified. And like they pulled him out of the car. I mean, it was like, what do we do? His pants were like undone. And he was like on top of me in the car. It was a lot. So, oh my God. Yeah. And so, so this got out. So, well, so my, they called my dad. My dad came to get me. He like attacked him in the parking lot. I bet. Punched him and like threw him to the ground. And the police had to pull him off. It was like a whole thing. So, I like lied to everyone. I was just like, nothing happened. Like I initiated it. I didn't want him to get in trouble. And like in my mind, though, I didn't think. It was like a well over a 10 year age gap. Like I didn't think like there was anything wrong because like malicious. Yeah. I thought he actually like loved me. I was like, he's, he's he going to be my me. boyfriend. Like I, 
you know, at 14. You had a soft kid brain, yeah. <laughs> a soft teenage brain. Yeah. Um, and because I had been friends with him for like a couple years, I think, before yeah. that. And like, I trust this guy. Because and I looked up to him. I was like, all the things. So aside from like the, I guess grooming is, is that what we would call that? But like, it was like a positive, he was a positive influence in your life. It seemed to be like, yeah. I didn't think what, what, well, it's his job to think about that. Do you know what I mean? Right. That the, the morality of the situation. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't ever foresee like any repercussions coming from it because I thought it would always be in secret. And yeah, cause I wasn't ready to like face that or talk to anybody about it. I mean, I just was like just entering high school. Oh my God. So anyway, my parents had to deal with that moment with me and they, took me to a psychiatrist because they thought like I needed to unpack like the event of it. Not necessarily like let's help him discover if he's gay. It was like, it was traumatic. Oh, it was traumatic. And the, the theater I was working at, they took, they like took, kicked him out of the show and like everyone knew and was like, so angry at me as if it was my fault. They you like, are kidding. And then they wouldn't let me do shows there for a while after that. You're kidding. No, they punished me and they're like, it's your fault. And we, lo- we lost our leading man and it's your fault. Like, that's all- disgusting. Yeah. They were like, you've always been. Oh, you, a should, say what the, you should say what the thing is so we can, like, well, and the other thing is, it. this has, like, come up again. This has, like, been a problem they've had through the years there, I guess, with other people and they try to, like, cover it up. Granted, I, like, they, they, I've always felt conflicted because they gave me my, my, they gave me the freedom to to discover theater and like find myself in that way. So I've never wanted to like talk bad about the organization, but it also was like the most toxic. No, that's like, fucked up. Horrible. Place. I don't care what they did positively. That washes it all away. Yeah. Um, but I was punished for sure. And they were like, he needs a break. He needs a break from this. It was like the only thing that it was the only outlet I had that made me feel like, like myself. Safe and or yeah, my, yeah, yeah. yeah I had, that was my only community. It was like, well, then I go back to high school and people are terrible. And then people at school started to hear that this happened. So I had to oh like lie about it. Um, so my parents, it was like, a, I think they thought at that moment I would have like used the opportunity to come out, but I didn't. I lied and was just like, no, no, no. I was just like curious and I don't know. Like, yeah, it, it was all me. Like I was asking him questions about it. And like I said, I told, I don't think I ever told them or the police that we actually were like hooking up repeatedly Uh uh-huh um and like him and his girlfriend his girlfriend like they made me see them at some points in secret what they were like can't tell the police anything happened it would be all your fault he'd go to jail oh my god that's like a lot for a a A teen a a 14 year year old old to process not for anyone honestly but especially yeah and i i noticed like i still it's like shaped that moment like and the shit that i carried from that for years kind of like shaped me yeah was he charged with anything? No, because I, I didn't we didn't press charges, press charges, and I told my parents I didn't want to, and I said that like it was all you. on my shoulders, which was not the case because he was the one that was oh my god orchestrating it. Me, yeah. Ew! What a what a what a <sighs> dick! Yeah, is he still like in theater? I don't know. You I don't know. I've never. You know, I one time I came back home, um, and went to a gay bar over like Christmas break while I was in college or something, and I ran into him it's the last only only time i've seen him and the last time i've seen him but i've never seen him on social media or anything um but it was really uncomfortable we didn't really have an exchange I, he just like said he was sorry and then i like couldn't be around him oh my god yeah but i didn't come out i didn't tell my parents <laughs> <laughs> um i was yeah and i've told them now like i think we've talked about it after, years and years later oh, oh, I'm oh. Like, oh we used to actually hook, hook up because um, you're really open with your mom yeah um and it's still like a sore spot for them because they knew it would like put me through it. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I waited till I was like in college with a boyfriend and then was like, Hey, I want to share this with you. And they were like, okay, Thank- we knew it since you were three. Oh, 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 wow. I mean, I'm, we have this video of Christmas morning and I'm like probably two or three years old. And my mom is opening, like I have all these presents that I just opened and my mom is opening a pair of like white pumps from my dad. And I'm like, I'm like smelling them. I'm like, so I'm more excited about those shoes than any of the gifts that I got. And my mom was like, I mean, babe, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. You should get that digitized and post it. Yeah. I didn't think I'm wearing like a little, like a, my little pony, like t-shirt or something. I mean, it's little mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. So Pink. she was like, I had, a, I had an inkling. Man, why why did society make it so uncomfortable? Oh, I don't know. 
They just didn't know. And then my mom was asking, she was a speech pathologist, I think at the time and works at a hospital. And she mm-hmm. was like, I think my son might be, I think my son might be, <laughs> my son's gay. Um, he's gay. And he, he's here. Yeah. He's here. He's and so gay. she's like, what do I do? And what, like, how do I help him? Or not like, how do I fix it? It was like, yeah. how like, do I be here How do I be him? supportive? Yeah. And so they were like, like let him, him do his thing. Like, if he wants to play with dolls, let him play with dolls. And, yeah. You know, if like it becomes an issue where people are like, that's cool. not normal. What are yeah. you doing? Then you can have a conversation with him. But like, it's like, let him do what he wants to do. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's gay. It's just like he's, he's, he's growing and learning. Yeah. So she was good about that. That's incredible. Yeah. Um. So what was your first? Okay. You made out with a guy friend. Yeah. Did you, had you been sexual with girls before that or during that? Yeah. I mean, I had always had girlfriends. Really? Since when? I mean, I remember having, I think my first girlfriend, Julie, yeah. who we, who oh, yeah. you right. haven't met, but who, who, I feel like I know. I just visited. Um, you feel like you know her. Mm-hmm. She and I dated when we were like nine in our first show together. And then we were always like on again, off again. Of course. And then she became, I think because she knew that side of me, she like always knew I was gay. And so then we just became like best friends. But then I dated other girls at high school mm. just to kind of like keep, keep people on their toes. Well, I was, I knew deep down, I was like, this isn't for me, but I was like, could it be? Let me sure. see if I could. So I like slept with some and, you know. In high school? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all I wanted was have sex with a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. And in high school, though, all that <sighs> happened was making out with that guy friend. And then were you guys drunk? No. And how was the makeout sesh? Ugh, like that, that like terrified shaking yeah like very nervous and like oh my god because again it was like at his house his parents were like home and we were in his bedroom i remember it like and all of a sudden it happened we just started kissing on the floor and then like there was no like lead up like wrestling or something or it'd be weird if you kiss me i think we just sort of like it in the moment felt right and then like we went for it and then we were like what oh my god what are we doing what do we just do um is he gay now oh yeah is he? Mm-hmm. He's married with kids, like to a guy and has children. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. Well, the crazy thing is, so that happened when I was 14. I think like maybe a year or two before I went to high school is like when I made out with a guy. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe like the summer before high school, freshman year. But then um, I took my first, like, do you want to know? I, I actually, I slept with a guy in, in high school, but it was like in New York City it was like this whole thing. It's like so, a theater camp thing? No. So my I went to New York. <laughs> my first trip to New York. Oh, it was a year later. I was 15. And my dad and my stepmom took me and my friend Rick to New York to see shows and uh-huh. hang out. And they let us like go on the, the double decker buses. By yourselves? Yeah. And just do our own thing. Meanwhile, like he's also gay. We didn't talk about it. We we're both in the closet. Like. I love it. And we. I. After like a full weekend of us just like touring around the city, like we went to Diesel, I think near Union Square and like the clothing shop. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And this guy like made eye contact with me there. And I was like, whoa, that's the most beautiful man I've ever seen. And then I realized he worked there and Uh, then he like tried to get me to like come talk to him. And I was like, oh, my God, we have to go. That guy wants to talk to me. And then by the end of the weekend, I made sure of it. I was like, I want to go back back and get a shirt at Diesel. And... I did, got a shirt. I was like, shit, he's not working today. I don't see him. But then I see him, tells me his name, introduces himself, and is like, oh, well, we should hang out. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not, I can't. And then we go back to our, ho- we go back to Times Square because we were staying at the Marriott Marquis. Rick is that to- there? Yeah, it was. Like, it, yeah, it's still there. It's like right in the heart of it. But then the Virgin record store used to be right there. Mm-hmm. And Rick was like, I want to go to Virgin and like look at CDs. And I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go to the hotel and I'll meet you there. So my sneaky little ass goes to the lobby of the hotel, gets my receipt out from Diesel, calls him from the payphone. Calls I call the from store the, okay. from the payphone in the lobby of the Marriott. And I'm like, can I speak to Gregory? And he gets on the phone. I mean, I'm ballsy at 15. He gets on the phone. And he's like, hey, come back. And I was like, this is Nick. We just met. And he was like um can you come back i want to like see you let's let let's hang out and i was like i actually don't live here i live in pennsylvania but can i get your phone number and so he gave me his phone number i called him when i got back to erie and we talked on the phone for like a year what yeah and like 
he would call the house and say he was like my friend from school. My mom's like, who's this guy, Greg? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's like, he's in my class. <laughs> um, He also, I, I told him I was old. I think I said I was like 18. Okay. Did you um, look 18? No. This okay. is... This is like I. I need to see a visual of you. At I 15 think I got the braces 16. came off at this point, but oh, like, oh, she was feeling herself. Yeah, like, um, I'm unstoppable. But then I, I, I went a year later to New York with my friend Matt and his mom, and one night I was like, hey, like I have a family friend that wants to take me to dinner, so like I guess I'll just see you guys in the morning, and they let me go. And he picked me up at the hotel and we had like a wild night. I had like a fake ID. So we went to all these like clubs and it was like all over the place. And then we went to Brooklyn and got like a rent by the hour room. Whoa. Cause he had roommates or something. I think he lived with his parents. Okay. To be honest. Okay. Um, like on Long Island or something. So we sealed the deal and in like, it was so like seedy and gross. You could like hear people like fucking in the next room. Um, did you top or bottom or I both? topped? Did you really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. But it was a good experience. It was a great experience. Like, honestly, I mean, then I, w- then I was like terrified that like I got like an STD or something for years after because I was like, I'm years. a child. It's like, what like, do I do? Um, But yeah, I mean, is it, that how is that you're losing your virginity? Yeah. Story. Yeah. And that's the way it happened. And then and then like, I think I had his phone number like written down on like a Marriott like the stationary that was like near the phones and it like went through the wash in a pocket of mine. And then like, I didn't have cell phone. It was, he'd always call my house phone cause I didn't have a cell phone then. So you just wait to see if you would call. Yeah. And then he like eventually stopped calling. <laughs> <laughs> and I think wow. I eventually told him, I was like, I'm, I'm 16 and I yeah, live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. I've actually tried to find him like on Facebook and stuff just to be curious, like years later to be like, who is that? Uh huh. I keep referencing the cameras if I'm supposed I love to look it. at it, but no, I mean we can. We're engaging people. Yes. Um go if you're listening to this, go check out the video on YouTube. Yeah. Um it's the pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it honestly looks like okay, do you remember back in the day if you put a magnet on a TV, it would like change it? Like, it? like it? yes. Yeah. It looks like I did that. This is actually we're recording this on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> then digitizing it and yes, uploading it. And then to putting YouTube. it back, yeah. Um so yeah, so that's how I I always think that's a kind of a wild story. It's very, first of all, there were twists because I thought when he was in the virgin store, you had him come and like have sex with you in the room. Oh no, I needed to be courted for a year <laughs> Before over the you, phone. Wow. But I honestly like, it was like a, I mean, we would like have phone sex and like, you know, talk dirty to each other you during the- seen each other's genitalia. Right. Wow. Wow. And there weren't like, this is- this is early. I mean, this is like, there weren't, I couldn't be like texting pictures back and no. forth or like, it was no. just all over like my landline that someone could pick up that my mom at any moment could pick up. That was maybe part of the excitement of it. Maybe big blue couch, big blue couch, landline sex. Landline sex. I think you're a little fucking public perv, I guess. And I say perv with love. Yeah. But that little version of you is a perv. That little, I mean, just ask the theater. They'll tell you that's my oh, fault. Oh no, uh, I cannot believe they would. They would be shut down if they had that take today. If that happened now, oh my god, shut down, slam oh, shut. My god, but like, and everyone who worked there, but like, they've done things recently where like they're going to have somebody in a cast that's been like that's had issues before in that vein of like oh they've got an inkling for children like, what are you doing and then the parents like complain and then they have to like shut then they like then they're like oh yeah yeah sure he but they see what they can get through oh 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 they still try to do it mm-hmm. so that's why i'm always like you you must be joking and i i again grapple with like not being supportive of that place because of what i found there for myself but it also it's like a dark spot in my you're a star and you would have found that Thank regardless. You. I say just fuck that place. Well, because there's people there that I care about that like they work there. That's their livelihood. But then I'm also like, where were they when no. I was, was being told I wasn't allowed to perform anymore? It's inexcusable. You should have been like, literally, they should have done a show with you in mind as like the lead. Like right. Oliver or something. Funny thing that you should say that because that's the next show they did. And I was like, for sure, I'm going to be Oliver or, or Dodger. Dodger. And 
was told I needed a break. And so I would, I did, it was the first show I'd never, I even auditioned in the first show. I never got cast in there. Cause I'd always been cast Yeah, every time. The first one I didn't get cast in. And then my mom had a conversation with the woman that ran the theater. And she's like, she was mad at me. Like, like mad. mad. Yeah. And would like ignore, I went from being her favorite to being like, she just would like not speak to me or look at me. So yeah, that's so fucked. Yeah. And I get like, sorry, I, sorry, you're, you're like, sorry, your leads a pedophile, like leading man. Yeah. Has a thing for kids, but like, it's not my fault. I can't believe the girlfriend was also like, you need to shut your mouth. Yep. I'll never forget. It took me to a private meeting in her A-frame in the woods. I want to, I do want to see what that guy looks like these days. I bet time has not been kind. Yeah. Doubtful. We had our, our choir teacher was married to a woman and we definitely were like, he's gay. But you know, in high school, you don't really have great gaydar. You're just like, no, he says he's straight. So I guess he's straight. He has a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he got caught having sex in like Forest Park. Oh, where the Muni is in one of the, like the bathrooms there with like a guy. And oh. so it was like out, you know, he got fired, like all these things and he's gay now. So sometimes I would hope you so. need to be arrested to, <laughs> to, to get to your gay. <laughs> Um, okay, wait. So after this like courtship, you're in high school still, mm-hmm. but do you act on your gayness? Only out of town. So okay. like, well, that's not true. For the first couple of years after that happened, like I went back to having girlfriends and was like, oh, cause I slept with a guy first, I think. And then had a girlfriend and was like, I need to make this work. Slept with her. Uh huh. Did the whole thing. Um, but I did summer stock after my junior year in Cincinnati, Ohio and with like all college kids. And I was the only high school student and I had my own apartment. Like they let my parents let me live my best life. And I was wild that summer. Like go on. Like I was sleeping with, I would like go into like the, the dock I think was like the name of this club underneath a bridge in Cincinnati. With like a leather bar? No, it just was like, I thought it was like a fun gay bar. Like I, I saw like Jennifer Holiday perform there. Like, yeah, pull up in like a stretch limo and she did like a set one night. I was like, what? whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, I think it just was shut, it's shut down now. But um, it was like their popular gay bar at the time and I would sneak in with a fake ID and sometimes go home with guys. Sometimes. Yeah. Did you hook up with other guys from the CCM? Or yeah. no? Oh, from yeah. The- yeah. Like I, I was hooking up with like one or two guys that were in the show and also a girl that was in the cast. Did you have like a threesome? No. Okay. It's always separate. Wow. So you're just like fucking horny. I just was like ready to explore, I guess. Yeah. But then this was the hard part was then I had to come back to Erie and finish high school. Oh my God. Knowing so, what you know about yourself. Yes. So I experienced like total freedom for a summer and then back to Catholic high school where I was like in the closet again. It was tough. Did you have a girlfriend that summer? Like when no. you went? Okay. Okay. Mm-mm. No. Um, so senior year was rough, but you were auditioning for like schools and stuff. Yeah. And like there was one out gay kid in my school and like we would occasionally fool around. Like what? Like my, like we, <laughs> we would like <laughs> sign out separately at the front desk uh-huh. cause I would take college classes and they were like, I would leave and then drive down the hill where like the college was. And so I was, so we would like both sign out at like, you know, different times and then drive to my mom's house, which was like maybe a 10 minute drive uh-huh. and like hook up in the hot tub and then like go back to school. Like skip the college class? And I was like, don't you ever tell anybody about this or I'll kick your ass. Yeah. Oh my God. No, I would just say I had a college class that day when I didn't. And then I would go use the time. To, and they like never checked. They didn't care. To hook up with. We go to like face? Taco Bell. Like my friends and I used to do that all the time. We'd go eat lunch somewhere. Then- Have you checked on him? I've seen him because he used to like, he used to like bartend in my hometown years later like if i was Was he cute yeah i mean at the time he was he was cute sure okay but it was also like the option yeah you make it work very cute (laughs) (laughs) okay wait so then you went to boston Mm -hmm. conservatory yeah and then were you just like running amok in boston Um, or did you kind of like level out i was like then that was like my first time like really like dating guys like not just like oh not just we like hang out around. after or hang out before yeah. yeah so i was trying i was like i feel like i went on a lot of dates um and then my sophomore year 
I started to date this guy and then I was with him like the rest of college. Yeah. He was um, a year ahead of me. Okay. So what were you in an open or closed relationship? Closed. Oh yeah. Just us. Just you for like three years of college. Mm-hmm. And like what happened? Um, he moved to New York like cause he was a year ahead of me. Oh, okay. And it just seemed, it just was like too hard. Yeah. He was going through some shit mm. emotionally and, um, had a hard, had a really hard time when he first moved to New York. Did he get into shows? Yeah. Oh God. Is yeah. he still doing he shows? He doesn't do that. He's left the biz, but, um, he's very successful and happy. Um, it just wasn't right. Like we had a, we grew a lot together. I wouldn't change it, but yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't the right one for me. We haven't mentioned once the, uh, that Nick's a successful Broadway actor, <laughs> singer, dancer, and he's in the film Fire Island. And there were some other ones before that, but you yeah. weren't like, yeah, these are great yeah. too. Yeah. And you're in the other two, which is one of the my favorite two. shows. Is there a third season? Yeah, it starts. Um, Did you film May. it? They already shot it. I'm not in it. You're not in it? No. That's stupid. I know. You guys were one of the funniest. It's a foursome yes oh my god i yeah, used to the be instigays. something and now i'm christian or something it, it was just so funny yeah i have nieces or like oh yeah i used to be fat but now i have two nieces yeah, like, that's, <laughs> yeah that was so ridiculous. and i was like i'm religious kinda yeah kind of was, was dallas's you guys were great tagline thank you it was really fun i had a blast on that show it's just so funny and everybody involved in it it was like the best experience every day molly shannon yeah wow um okay wait so that guy, and then you met, you've been with your partner for 13 years. Mm-hmm. So you met him moments after this relationship ended? No. Um, I had been in New York for a minute. Um, we met doing Priscilla Queen of the Desert together. Mm. Um, and then. What was it like? Was it like, um, was it like love at first sight? Was it like, <laughs> what was like it like falling in love with this person? We always had like an energy uh-huh. and. I thought he was so talented. Like he was, he's such a beautiful dancer and he's like sick. He's like over six, two and like, wow. Broad shoulders and like, he's handsome. Yeah. And really talented. And I thought he, he had like kind of like a bad boy energy about him, which was not normally my go-to, but there was something I was like, this guy <laughs> in his, and he like, didn't give a fuck. Dance belt. Yeah. Like there was something he had this, like he, he smoked. He smoked. That's immediate bad boy. Which I like, made him drop, but like good. Yeah. Good. Um but yeah, he just like seemed like he really didn't care what other people thought and just and he still like he Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I think he really his sense of individuality has always inspired me and like he really he leans into like what he likes and doesn't care if other people like it and I have often been the opposite of that. Sure. So that has been really good for me to, to like rub off, like rub, have rub off, off on, on me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we always had this energy and like the choreographer of that show, anytime I had to be like partnered or lifted by somebody would like pair us together. If I had to dance with an ensemble guy, they would like have us be together. So it would kind of, Oh my God. Kind of, I don't think he even knew at the time, but had a hand in, or getting you guys yeah, then we'd together be kind of flirty and rehearsal but they probably put you together because the the energy was palpable yeah so that so we rehearsed the show in new york then went out of town to toronto um for the tryout uh-huh. and up there it was like oh this you're is in a hotel yeah and you're like it's a different life you're like we had i don't know months up there to kind of be away from real life in new york and fall in love yeah And so then we, I thought it was like a showman. I didn't know if it was going to turn into a relationship. And then we got back to New York and I remember having a conversation in Times Square. We were leaving the theater and he. A lot of Times Square with you. I know. I know. Which is a place I try to avoid at all costs. Yeah, I thought everyone did. Our theater, the palace was right in Times Square by TKTS. So we were like leaving the theater together one night. And I was like, so is this like, are we in a relationship? Are we going to be my boyfriend? And um, then. He said, let me think about it. And then. uh here we are. I, wow. It's crazy. And then we, we did Wicked together like a couple years after that. Um, and he was your understudy. He was my understudy. Crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Did that put a strain on the relationship? No, because. Okay. I, I think of the capacity in which we met, like that was 
you were the lead uh, yeah. and he was support. Yes. And so there wasn't, we didn't have like this sense of, of competition. And then it's not like he was like auditioning or trying to play Fiero. It's like he auditioned for the show as a dancer. And because he's a great singer and actor, they like, Oh, it was so. like perfect to understudy. Yeah. And I saw him do it before I even joined the cast. So like he, anytime I was going to be out for like, I had to, I had to miss that contract for like weddings like girlfriends of ours were like really it was a time when they were all getting married yeah so i would have to leave and go to the wedding and he would go on so like the money still came home you nice know? <laughs> wait do you not paid when you don't do the show well it depends if you have like um you you get so many like sick days and and personal days and stuff but got like, it but in general mostly like if you're not there you're not getting wow. you get deducted for that performance sure, sure, sure. that you miss but um yeah, so he would still get paid extra for when he would go on. Yeah. And then it was like how our household, you know? Yeah. But no, he... It, Have you guys been in the same place? When did you move in with each other? Oh, um, we've lived together for like 11, 11 years. Wow. Yeah. And from... Wait, and you guys have gone through... Peer, I actually... Do you feel comfortable talking about your relationship? Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to like... We didn't say his name, but I didn't want you to say anything. Um, you've gone through periods of being open and closed. Is that true? Well, like with bringing, like we've we've had like guest stars come in. You know, we've been we've been like let's be open together. And okay, like, and experiment. Sure, with what that is like. Sure, but yeah. you've, it sounds like you have great communication. Yeah, we don't like we're in a spot now where we don't do that um, because I. I kind of screwed it up like i like thought i was having feelings and like oh for somebody and i was I, we talked about that i was like look i don't know if this is such a good idea i think um, i'm yeah and i also i found us at times like it was good for us because it made like us um able to communicate and not have insecurities surrounding like if the other person found someone else attractive or like those things that can come up when you're young in a relationship and like feeling threatened by that sure. also and I, watching someone you love have chemistry with someone else you're yeah, like it can be like whoa hey 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 yeah hey, hey, easy. Uh, at least pretend to like me just as much or yeah. something yeah so we i think we learned a lot from the experiences we had together and right now it's just not something we're doing but yeah i don't think that it's not ever going to happen again like sure. um like we occasionally talk about it but just like where we're at with like work and stuff right now. It's like, we're rarely in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wait, do you have any, like you said, you mentioned that you had a bunch of crazy sex stories. Like, do you have like good ones, bad ones, anything? You I had sex on Amtrak. What? <laughs> Not even in the bathroom, like in the seats, like a private, mm -mm. like An overnight train. Or like, yeah. And when you say sex full on with a butt, a butt, Go on. Yeah. So this was my college boyfriend. We were take. I don't know where we were traveling. We might have been going. We might have been going back to Boston or going to New York City. But it, it was overnight somewhere. Um, and we were just like, people were sleeping. It wasn't a full train, so like, I there would was say distance. I would say like the the seat next to us didn't have anybody. Like the two seater next to us was empty. Well, that's good. And we kind of just like put the seat back, and he like sat on my lap and we like laid down and it was like the train was rocking and kind of noisy but like we somehow made it work and he like came in the butt yeah wow <laughs> wow I under know. a blanket yeah yeah we had like one of those like cheap felt sort of amp wow things. how long was the train ride this was a long this was a long ride i mean okay. it was like 45 least, minutes no like at least like an eight hour trip or something crazy. damn yeah Okay, that's yeah. a pretty good one. Yeah, we did that. Um, we, Kyle and I, like, like, never talked about having a threesome before, ever. Like, it never came up. And then we went to... Because you found you guys, each other very sexually satisfying, you think? Yes, and but also... It's uncomfortable. It felt, like, threatening or something. Yeah. It like, just you're wasn't not something... Like, literally, you're not enough. Yeah. I think it was just something we wouldn't even put on the table. And at that time, like... I don't know if as many people talked about that being like probably not common. Yeah. So I feel like now it's more common to be open than to not be open. I would say that right? too. Yeah. Although Darren and I post a clip of WeHost talking about that and yeah. people are like, 
this is disgusting. This is everything that's wrong with the really? gay community. I mean, people have very strong. They're very, though. yes. Like it's a divisive, but I will say, and I stand by this. Like, I think open relationships are a little bit more mature for whatever reason. Cause it's like acknowledging that like you don't get everything you want or need from one person. Right. And it's like, I don't believe that every, and unless sacrifice is part of your, turn on like mm-hmm. yes like i'm not gonna do this because i love this person i'm more on the like if i can have it all i'm gonna have it all yeah do you know what i mean yeah so i just think it's like people who are in closed relationships present coming excluded and are in them out of like fear or have discussed towards open relationships that speaks volumes to me yeah that's not exactly but that's not like where we're at with it because we have yeah you've done it been there and back but like it's it's also not it's not like this like definitive thing that we'll never do that again. I feel like if tomorrow we met somebody that we were like, Oh, that could be fun. Yeah. We would probably be like, yeah, let's go for it. Totally. And it, there wouldn't be like a weird hang up about talking about it. Um, but the first time it ever happened, we had not discussed, we were like in Mexico on vacation and feeling, I guess a little, a little crazy. And we were, and it just like, this guy started talking to us and like, it just happened. It just, all of a sudden we're like, in some room and it's we're going for it and then we like afterwards we're like that was how come we've never done this before fun (laughs) and then was it off to the races yeah yeah was it yeah it was like i'm at this guy box it It was a can of pringles (laughs) yeah yeah i feel like we went and we went from one extreme to the other Sure, and like we gotta close her down cool our jets a little bit Um, Okay, let's play a quick round of hot or not. Okay. I just, I'm going to list things and you tell me if you find them hot or not. So, um, body hair. Hot. Okay. Um, Piercings. Hot. Okay. Well, it depends where and like what and how many. You already said, yeah. So. Okay. He has a bar through the middle of his dick. That's an absolute. He has two going across his butthole, like a little X. (laughs) No, but like an ear, a nip, maybe. I'm not like, it's not necessarily a turn on for me, but like. I wouldn't poo poo it. I would be like, yuck. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I should call it hot or yuck. Um, um, nipples. Like, do you have like, um, you know how some guys have like hardwired nipples where they put like clamps on them? Well, just in general, their nipples are like an erogenous zone. I'm not like for, I can get into like, like kissing and like playing with one. Uh But like, for me, it's not my go-to to be like, yeah, get after my nipple. (laughs) Bite it with your teeth. Yeah, like that doesn't do much for me, I guess. Okay. Like if someone's like squeezing on my, or like pinching my nipples, I'm kind of like, okay, hey. are you liking that? Are you enjoying it? Um, Foreskin. Sure. Yeah. Um, Water sports. Now, it's not a request of mine. <laughs> like I will never be like, please, let's, let's, let's like. Let's bring urine into this. Mm-hmm. You're in trouble. Totally. But in the right time and place, I guess. I just always worry about, I guess, like the after effects. If like, it's in the shower. Sure. But like on, on furniture? Cloth? Yeah. No. Or like, I, or maybe also ocean side. Outside. Yeah. Where you get peed on and then run into the ocean or pee on someone. Yeah. You get stung by a jellyfish and then you go right. And then the you ocean. run and then you get peed all out of order. He's like, I just peed on you for, for funsies. Now I need it for my jellyfish like, sting. In the right minds, like... It's not, I can't say I've never, that it's never happened. Yeah. But, it's but you're not, not like, I'm not like, yes, please. Like Kyle, like, don't drink, don't, don't pee yeah, between don't, now and. Better hold that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Dom sub like behavior. Dom sub roles. Sure. Okay. God, you like everything. Tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your eyes lit up a little bit, but <laughs> are tattoos like an actual like move the needle thing? I think so. I think it definitely like it, in the right way adds. And I'll be like, hmm. but like, it's not, I've also seen someone with a lot of tattoos that I'm like not, yeah. not into fair. I um, guess it depends on what the tats are. If they're like good tattoos and the placement and the person's energy. Honestly, if there's enough of them, I'm usually like into it I'm like, on oh. the face knuckles. Oh my God. A guy with like a button up shirt and a tattoo on his Creeping neck popping out. out or cu- creeping out from the cuff onto the hand, knuckle tats definitely do get me. I'm like, yeah. Sure. You're a bad boy. You're much bad like your boy. dancer partner. Yeah. This is the bad boy. Um, feet. 
If they're nice feet, like I can appreciate a nice foot, but I'm not like trying to suck your toes. That could be a knot for you then. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not like gimme give gimme give those stinky feet. Give me those, like walk on my face. Those toesies. Yeah, give me those toes. That's I'm not not that it's not like it. a turn on, but if someone has like like I like when a guy has nice feet, but yeah. I'm not You're not like put them in my mouth. Uh uh-uh. same. Um come. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Would you rather give cum or receive cum? Do I have to choose? I was, I knew you were going to say yes. Like, or like, no, you don't. You don't. This is not Sophie's choice. Yeah. Don't make me. Don't make me choose. Um, hair pulling. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Like yours being pulled or you're pulling the other person's or both? Both. Nice. Biting? Um, not to the point where I'm, I'm like, you might break skin. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and we'll end with choking as yeah. most people, as yeah. most interviews you've had do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can definitely be into it in the heat of the moment. Sure. I've, I've in the past, unfortunately had like an experience where my, it was so aggressive that like you lost consciousness. I had like bruising in like in my throat. And so as like a singer, it's not ideal for that to happen. Like where all of your the weight is like on your trachea. Yeah. Did you know that was happening at the time? Or you yeah. Like, okay. And I was like, "This is a stop." Yeah. Stop. Mo- full stop moment. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah. I've I've like put a a belt around someone's neck before and like done that kind of thing. Hold yeah. while you're like fucking them. Yeah. Wow. I've never incorporated a belt. Are you in a leather? Not no, like okay. Tama Finland, sure. Yeah, the Eagle, absolutely. I just never like. I guess I don't see leather and go, hmm. Yeah, I'm not like I want to lick those boots, kind of. Yeah, guy. like and the chaps and the hat and the. It's all a costume for me. Yes, it feels very costumey. But like, the idea of like, like I have one of those like Tama Finland books and like the images from days of yore. I'm like, yes. oof, yes. You're like yes, please. But if that if that like cartoon came to life, I'd be like. <laughs> wow no i'd be into it but like i feel like when you see it's like such a not to diss it i just it, it feels very like i'm getting in my leather costume yeah almost cosplay yeah because like you don't this person doesn't exist or if they do exist you're not them you're like stepping into a role right but like guys in leather i can find to be hot for sure good for you you don't like a oh, leather yeah, jacket sure. yeah, or a yeah, leather yeah. harness I've never owned a harness. Really? Do you use do you use a harness? It's used for like fucking. I mean, I thought that was the point. To grab onto something. Isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Try it. Blind leading the blind here. Yeah. Um, okay, and the last thing is what's like a piece of advice you'd give younger Nick before he began his sexual journey? Oh, to like not have shame surrounding it. Just okay. fucking relax a little bit. Don't be so nervous all the time i was like very nervous i would like sleep with someone and then be like ashamed and like nervous about everything because of the time i grew up in and like you know a small town yeah small town (laughs) small town mentality surrounding what it meant to be gay i was just always afraid yeah um which still like plagues me into this stage of my life just because it's like ingrained in my genetic makeup it's like a story you told yourself like over and over yeah um yeah, just have a little bit more freedom, I guess. Beautiful. So, where can people find you? They can find me at um, Instagram at the Nick Adams mm-hmm. and Twitter and Facebook. I think it's all the same. Are you active on Twitter? I mean, it's basically like reposting of yeah. things on Instagram sure, sure, or sure. like an article that you could find anywhere else. That's but active. Yeah, cool. I'm not not on there. I know I'm, we're not supposed to be on Twitter anymore. Really? Like politically? Yeah, everybody. Is Elon. Yeah, people are like del- leaving Twitter. I'll do. I'll do it when I when. But I feel like a lot of when the, God wants me to do it. Yeah, when tw- Twitter might end. So then, okay, they make the decision for us. But um, yeah, yeah, Instagram. I feel like is my main. I'm not a TikTok guy. You should be. I feel like I, I miss thrive on it. No, like you said this the, about YouTube or something yeah. too. <laughs> you especially because you can dance, <laughs> but like TikTok is TikTok's weird. Like. It's not dance. second dancing. <clears throat> it's not dance anymore. It used to be just dance or people thought that. It's not. It's everything. Do you even watch TikTok? 
when someone sends me one. No, that's such a boomer move. <laughs> it is. Because there's that. Do you enjoy it when they send you? Sometimes. <sighs> You got to just treat yourself. To some I feel like I'm just resistant to it because I'm like another thing. I'm like, I don't I'm wasting enough of my time on social media. Like, what do I need another? But it could enhance your life. It's enhanced mine. I can say that big enhancement. Yeah. In what? Because I learn a lot. I learned like news. recipes. Mm. Some news. You knew dances, recipes. No, I don't see much dance. At the beginning, TikTok was just sending me like 22 year old bisexual guys flinging their ding dong along within shorts which is a big part of it oh well i'm sold you should have yeah. le- you should have led with I that know. recipes I- <laughs> recipe for disaster uh, yeah i thought it was like guys tying s- knots and stuff no i'll send you some dong alongs <laughs> some ding dong alongs yes, i gotta get a tiktok it's account. a thing it's great all right and gym shorts yes Whew. well that's a this. that's a definite yum for me 